let's talk crypto. Another little walk and talk video for you guys. I wanted to raise a few questions in regards to this whole security situation. Now, I got my pad with me because these are a bit deep. Let's start with the big one, though. What happens if the SEC approves an asset to be a security? The key word is important there, approve, because in my research, I am discovering that this situation may not be as dire as everyone is making it out to be. This is just the information that I'm gathering. But if the SEC approves an asset to be a security, a number of things are going to happen. One, it's going to be subject to the same rules and laws as other securities, which is obvious. This will include registration with the SEC, as well as disclosure of financial information, what the company is doing, how well is it at doing it, all of those things. Things that are, when I think about it, pretty common sense. If you're running a business or you're looking to invest in a business, you want to be sure that the business is legit. So I get that. But the next question that I have is, what is a security? I got many definitions for that answer, but the one that I found to be the most sound and simplest was from Duke Law. They say that an investment, that it's an instrument, excuse me, that evidences ownership rights a creditor relationship, or other rights in a firm entity or government body, things like that, right? Now, the term creditor relationship, I'm becoming a lot more familiar with because when FTX, Voyager, Celsius, those exchanges began to collapse, in the correspondence with some of the people who were involved, they're called creditors. I know this because one of the exchanges that Voyager owned was called Vault. You guys may remember that I was promoting the exchange for quite some time. They had a very good staking program rates that I had not seen anywhere else. But they have kept correspondence with me throughout this whole time through email. And I am often referred to as a creditor. So I just found that to be interesting. That's the definition of a security, though. It's an instrument that evidences ownership rights, a creditor relationship, or other rights in an entity or firm. So we have our definition. We have what happens if the SEC approves an asset to be a security. Now the question is, who can buy these securities? All right. And then this is when my worries begin to definitely dissipate, definitely dissipate a lot. Because you see, you have judiciary figures. You have corporates, of course, corporate entities, and you have organizations, you know, large organizations. And then you also have individuals. So it's me and you, ladies and gentlemen, we can buy securities. Uh, I think a perfect example of that would be Robin Hood. Mm -hmm. Robin Hood, as a matter of fact, that whole GameStop fiasco would have never happened if the public wasn't able to invest in GameStop, which was a security. So. That just, again, these are just questions that were brought up when I looked to search for the answers. And I'm, I'm being attacked here. Excuse me, Buck. Now, it also brought up another topic, accredited investors. And these, this is something that uh, we have brought up. The questions have come up in the comments about a vetted, uh, accredited investor law. Excuse me. There have been questions to come up in the comments about these accredited investor uh, criteria, laws, if you will. Well, I'll say this. They're not necessarily laws and they're not concrete. The accreditor investor criteria that we're all familiar with, you have to make over a million dollars, uh, your net worth, you have to pull in at least 400 K in the previous two years prior to you applying to be an accredited investor and, or you have to be a financial expert and carry at least three different licenses, the names of which I do not remember at the moment, but that's just a criteria. It's not a mandate. It is not a formal uh, title that you must wear before you download an investing application. And then here's another thing, too. Accredited investors can invest in regulated and non-regulated investment products makes sense as an accredited investor. The whole point of becoming accredited is so you can verify to the government or whoever you're investing in that you actually got the money that you say you have. So on the security side, you have a situation where the SEC is just simply trying to make sure that the company that you're investing in is legit. 
And the accredited investor title is simply there to do the same thing from the investor side. So these two things make sense. I get it. I get it thus far, right? Now, do you need to be an accredited investor to buy securities? No, not at all. Which raises another question. If the, if the SEC makes the decision that XRP is a security and anyone can buy securities, whether you're accredited or not, then I need to know what is all of this hype about? And more importantly, what did the SEC find a couple years ago? And why are they still holding on to it? Because again, I'm not picking sides in this situation. I hold XRP. You guys know, I said it all the time. I was there when they dropped the hammer down. But ever since then, I, just like you, have been trying to figure this all out. And I think I did this afternoon. <laughs> I think I did this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, because a couple more questions that it brings up as well is the fact that when you're dealing with blockchain or a distributed ledger, especially on the XRP ledger, once you have at least one XRP, you're on the account. You're on the record books. As a matter of fact, you have, as it says, evidence of ownership rights. OK, because when you're dealing with blockchain, when you're dealing with distributed ledger technology and you open up an address or you make a transaction on a particular blockchain, you are the owner of that block of that transaction of that record. And everyone knows that. So you have your disclosure of information right there. Right. So I'm still trying to figure out what exactly is the issue here. Right. What's the cause for all the drama? What's the reason for the suppression of the price? What's the reason for, you know, influencers in the space trying to say this and say that? Now, again, I'm not bringing this up to discredit any of the work that is being done by those like Mr. John Deaton and several other figures that are involved with this lawsuit. I'm not trying to discredit anything. I'm just trying to get answers to these questions. All right. We know what happens if the SEC approves an asset to be a security. They would then have to go through a process of registration and then disclosing financial information, proving what they do and how they do it and how good they are at it. If an asset then becomes a security, it will then be traded on SEC regulated exchanges and public exchanges. OK, which are all registered, which is all probably regulated by the SEC. I'm pretty sure Robin Hood is and as well as Webull, right? You guys get where I'm getting at here. Now, in regards to the SEC XRP situation, we are still waiting for the aftermath of the Hinman documents to unfold. So again, raises another question, what did they find, okay? And as far as the situation between Binance and Coinbase, we'll see with Coinbase, it's a situation, it's real funny because Coinbase is registered. Coinbase is a public company. And in that in the reading that I did today about uh, securities and all of that, securities are assets that are tended are usually traded on public platforms. Coinbase had an IPO. They went public. So that would mean that they're a regulated platform. Again, this is just to my understanding. I have been looking into this stuff for months and I have yet to come across somebody to stop me in my tracks and say, hey, young blood, you're not looking at that the right way. That's why I'm making this video. OK, but yes, the Coinbase situation, they're basically trying to specifically focus on the individual assets that's being exchanged. OK, that's why XRP, Solana, Cardano, so forth and so on. But once they do the once they really you know, dig deep into those projects, they'll figure out that Cardano, especially, and Polygon are both highly decentralized. Solana might be a security. Hey, but based on the information that I have discovered today, I'm not that I'm not worried about that. Just going to have to switch platforms, <laughs> you know, just going to have to switch platforms if that is the case. Now, in relation to finance, finance, the situation is a bit deeper. It's a bit thicker. There are criminal uh, alleged criminal charges that they're trying to pull. But one thing I did read that stood out to me was the fact that what the SEC is also looking to get 
is for Binance to register in the U.S. as an exchange for securities. So if Binance does that, right, and I'm assuming that they'll have to do it through their Binance U.S. subsidiary. So it would actually be Binance U.S. registering with the SEC, and then that would put them on the exact same plane as Coinbase. So then it wouldn't be a problem with the exchange. It would then again be a problem with the individual assets. But if we go back to our list of questioning, everyone can buy the security. The accreditor in the accredited investor criteria is not a universal law. Again, I'm trying to find a problem here, ladies and gentlemen. And that's 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 really what this whole video is about is I've put together disinformation and the conclusion that i'm getting is making me less and less worried about the next headline in regards to the sec versus ripple case now yes the impact that is going to come out of it is going to be massive it is it will have an effect on the industry because then it will be easier to figure out which cryptos are securities or commodities and then (laughs) after you figure out if it's a security, then you have to figure out what kind of security it is. So, <laughs> there is at least what, six or seven different versions of securities that serve different things. So if you're having trouble figuring out consensus mechanisms, proof of stake, proof of work, proof of history, proof of authority, huh, just wait until we get into the securities uh, classifications and all of that stuff. I'm, I'm pretty sure a couple of you have, have backgrounds in finance and you're familiar with that and you're probably laughing. Because it is a mess. It, and, and that is one thing, too, that I'll leave you guys with, is that this is going to be messy. This is going to be messy, depending on either way it goes. doesn't matter which way it goes. It's going to be a messy situation from an organizational standpoint, because there is that one question that you still have to answer. When it comes to blockchain technology, how do you define an accredited investor and i have i have two screenshots i'm gonna share with you guys all right let me readjust the pad here oh yeah when they tell you to do your own research don't worry about that i got you so there are two bills and these bills are fresh as of this month okay number one credit and investor definition review act this bill has been put forth i believe it's been passed into the senate Okay, this is going to review the old accredited investor criteria that we were just talking about. And then the second bill is the Fair Investment Opportunity for Professional Experts Act. This is going to add to the criteria to become an accredited investor to include having qualifying professional knowledge through educational or professional experience. Now, again, This still needs to pass, still needs to become law. But according to that wording, we would technically already be accredited investors because of the amount of research that we do with these projects. And from my standpoint, as a content creator, someone whose kind of, you know, way of making a living revolves around studying and being involved with these entities, I would definitely be an accredited investor. So with those two with those two bills on the horizon and the insight that I provided with to you in this video, I hope that just quelled some fears. Really, that's all I was trying to do, because, yes, it is a heavy question. If the SEC approves XRP as a security, what will happen? Which markets will be open to trade it? What will happen to all the XRP on uphold? (laughs) Those are those are serious questions, ladies and gentlemen. Only time will tell. Excuse me if you heard that, but only time will tell. And I can't wait to see how this all unfolds. As far as this video goes, that's all I got for you guys. Nice little walk and talk. This was just something that was on my mind and I needed to share it. And I'm hoping that somebody who watches this will have a little bit more clarity. And then we can, you know, down in the comments, chop it up, figure this thing out and go from here. So. With all that being said, guys, you know what I'm about to tell you. Have a great day. Have a prosperous day. Check out the video from earlier today. And always remember, if that money is digital, so is the hustle. 
I'm Wade Teamer, and I'll see you in the next one.